Road. Hello and welcome back to Calculus 3. Now this is the lecture on uh, calculating mass uh, integrals and uh, figuring out where the center of mass is for one-dimensional, two-dimensional and three-dimensional um, cases. So uh, first off, uh, we talk about dimensions. We said that if you have just the length, uh, that would be length L, and that would be one dimension. If you have some kind of a rectangle, triangle, square, circle, uh, you are talking about area, that would be two dimensions. And if you have some kind of an object, I don't care whether it's a, a, a cube or a, or a pyramid or you know whatever like that it would be the volume which is 3d now we know that 100 percent of the things that we pick up in life uh, are three-dimensional objects so over here i'm holding a pencil and this is a three-dimensional object because it has the the length of the pencil but also the cross section of this is a circle so this is a cylinder right with a cone on top right because it's sharpened so this is a three-dimensional object. However, we can disregard that this is a three-dimensional object and worry just about its length because length overshadows the entire uh, cross-section of this. The other example of this would be a cable or a, or a wire uh, or a rope because the length of the rope um, is um, much, much larger in uh, comparison to its cross-section, so you can regard those three-dimensional objects as one-dimensional. So now, when we are considering uh, length, right, the one-dimensional cases, we are actually considering three-dimensional objects where we are completely uh, uh, disregarding the cross-section because the length of the object is so large. So they will say, okay, we can talk about the thin rod, so it's a, it's a long rod that it's very thin. You know that the cross section of that rod is a, is a rectangle, so you do have, it's technically a box. But if you take the cross section of this classroom to be the, right, one of the, our walls to be the cross section rectangle for the, the rod when you zoom in, then the length would be in miles and you still wouldn't care, right? Uh, or uh, uh, a wire, right? You take a wire, that, that would be a cylinder, uh, and still, we are disregarding the um, we are disregarding the the width, uh, the cross section. Now, for our um, two dimensional objects, uh, I, 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 I'm holding this uh, keyboard for my my Surface Pro. Uh, this is three dimensional object. It does have a width, right? Uh, width of this is what an eighth of an inch, right? Um, so if you're looking at this you say, well, it's a three-dimensional object, but again, the width of this is completely negligible to its um, uh, area uh, where the keys are and the mouse pad, right? So we are, again, disregarding the, the height of this completely and just saying, okay, this is 2D. So if I am looking for the center of mass, right, I'm looking for a point which will only um, balance out, which will only balance out the, um, the area, because we really don't care that the, the width of this object is uh, uh, the same everywhere, the height of the object is the same everywhere. So, so we will think about something that it's like a plane, right, and you can have different objects. So maybe, uh, obviously, if you take, a, a, I don't know if you know what LP records are, but they used to exist longer than any of you. Um, center of mass is in the middle, right, and then you just have a circle around. Now, is that for all records? No. It's very interesting to see that some people get, uh, went to great lengths to create uh, art piece out of records. So uh, what they would do is they would push uh, a, a two song single, right? Uh, so you have only one song on one side and one song on the other side. They still use the big LP, but what they do is they trim the shape of that LP to be anything. So let's say you can you can have um, um, the anchor, like for, for boats, right? You have uh, the anchor, and then in the middle of the anchor there is this, this little wide circle where the one song is on one side and the other. So when you when you call that, it's actually in the shape of an anchor and it looks really cool, 
right? You put in a record player, obviously the songs are in the, in the middle, so it will play just fine, but it's not using, right, because it's not a full album, so it's not putting five or, you know, whatever songs on one side and five or whatever on the other side. It just has one each side, so it doesn't have to use everything, everything so the extra um, uh, material on the outside is not used for the four songs that are missing per side, can be trimmed into whatever shape. Now the central mass of that one is not going to be uh, in the middle. Now that design works very well for uh, the um, uh, LPs because they uh, rotate at a very uh, low speeds. It works very poorly for CDs because CDs rotate at a much, much faster, right? So the uh, design uh, for that would have to, um, so only certain CD players actually, good old days when you can find one, right? You, you could find actually many, uh, could play uh, CDs that have the, the weird shape and uh, uh, the basic ones could only play the, the regular stuff. So uh, figuring out the 2D uh, center of mass again, it's, it's cool. And then we have the 3D that is going to be center of mass. Now you have the center of mass um, as a person, you are a three-dimensional right, object, so or subject, <laughs> whatever. Um, so you would have your center of mass, and then uh, you know when you go and you take the the self-defense classes, they say, well, you lower your center of mass, and it's harder to tip you over, right? And then if you frame someone out, they can just kill you because. <laughs> You're just standing there framed up. Anyway, let's not go into that. Um, so we have we have calculations for center of mass. Now, uh, as you understand this, I'll still uh, put an object over here and put the center of mass somewhere inside. Uh, obviously, center of mass has to be within the object. Let me write that in, in blood over here because um, here and there on the exam, I get the answer that the center of mass is outside of the object. And then, you know... My, my forehead from the face palm is so red, you know, I always preemptively put the lenses in before I open Calc 3 exams because if there is a student who claims that the center of mass is on the outside of the object, it's the immediate face palm, um, clearly I can't balance this object with the center of mass that's here because <laughs> it's not, right? That's, that's something. So center of mass... must be within the object's interior. Okay. So that is an amazing question and I was just waiting for someone to ask it. Thank you. Center of mass for the for the donut? Well, see, the thing is that you can't really balance the donut on the center of mass, right? So what you have to do with the donut, you have to stand it up. So if this is the donut, right? If you wanna balance it, you have to stand it like this and balance it. It's weird. You can't be touching the donut in the non-existing thing in the middle, right? And you can't even use it that way. So, so technically, the, the, the CD is a, a, a disc that it's like a, a slice of a donut because it has the, the hole, but it's not balanced that way. What it, what, it, what it has, it actually has the little uh, mechanical arm that actually grabs it from the, from the inside. It snaps in, right? So, and then it lets go. So it's actually not, never touching the, the center of mass. So um, if you want to balance something out, the, you have to be uh, working at the center of mass, and center of mass needs to be within the object. Now, if you don't have um, the center of mass inside the object, you can't balance at that point because the point is not inside the object. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Kind of, sort of? And uh, maybe I should pass to you one of the honors uh, problems from the honors lab, which includes the volume of the, of the donut, where you actually take a circle and then you rotate uh, around the, the axis to, to create a donut-like shape, asking what the volume is. 
Uh, there was a part B for that problem which I removed because of the, the uh, because of the time, uh, you know, for the, for the summer. Uh, and uh, the part B is uh, figure out the center of mass and can you balance it at the center of mass because you can't, right? It would be in the middle of the donut and you can't touch it there. So you would actually have to either put the toothpicks through the donut, right, to intersect in the middle, or you would have to stand the donut up on the side, which means that your finger is actually not touching the center of mass, which is, again, but excellent. Thank you for asking, because that's, that's, that's great. <laughs> so center of mass must be within the object's interior so that you can actually, you know, put your finger there and, uh, and balance the object so it, uh, so it stands. Now, if the, the center of mass is in the empty space, you cannot balance that object at that point. So uh, now that doesn't happen in a mechanical engineering because obviously bridge has to better be one, one solid piece. Otherwise, your bridge would not work very well, right? Um, and then whatever, obviously the inside of the houses, inside of the buildings, inside of all of these things have their center of mass somewhere inside, which is the empty room. It's not a solid block, so you can actually enter the structure. Uh, you can practice that with the, with Minecraft. Uh, you know, if you fill in everything with blocks and you just have a big block of blocks, you can't enter that. Uh, that's another thing. So good. Now the uh, the next um, thing, so uh, is um, density. We have to discuss density because uh, density is going to uh, offset central mass. So density of an object we have that as rho uh, rho of uh, no rho constant or rho of x rho of x y and rho of x y z uh, uh, variable The density of an object could be uniform density or a constant density. So if you take a look at this pencil, it's entirely made out of wood with uh, graphite all the way through it. So it's, it's, um, it's uh, the same density as, you, as you, you know look through it. If this pencil was made half out of wood and half out of metal, the metal side would be heavier because it's denser, right? So um, the the mass of an object depends on a density and uh, the mass of an object is actually the integral of density so density is very important and um, you have I, I did mention at one point uh, Tesla car right so you know that the Tesla car as any other car is made out of metal and, uh, and plastic and, and you know all the different types of materials uh, that, uh, Tesla has a very dense battery and that ba very dense battery is on the bottom of the car giving a lot of mass to the bottom of the car the top of the car has a hollow shell <laughs> right in which you which you enter to sit in so clearly the car is much denser uh, at the bottom than at the top so we have to take that variable density uh, in consideration as we are integrating bounds of the car to find the center of mass of the car and as I said, uh, out of all cars on the market, um, the Tesla has the lowest center of mass because it doesn't have an engine and all of the, all of the mass uh, and all of the heaviest parts are all centered uh, at, the, uh, at the floor level. So, um, and keep in mind that the engine for the conventional car right, is the, uh, always above the floor level. So that's why Tesla has the... Um, the best uh, best handling, obviously, also in curves because he has the lowest central mass. It's very difficult, almost impossible to flip it, actually. So, uh, when you are talking about the density, then we go and we talk about concept of a mass. Now, the way I like to dis define mass is the quantification of physical existence. Okay, uh, sure, there are many definitions for mass that you can look at, uh, look up, and research. And some are going into the details of the, you know, subatomic particles and, and, and so on. Uh, but the, 
I, I see it as, as, as the easiest and the laziest way to define the mass is uh, quantification of physical existence. So, uh, you know, the, 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 the feelings and, uh, and the souls and the, the beliefs and things like that, none of those things have a, a physical um, representation. Therefore, we don't worry about it. So mass should be uh, something that is uh, quantifiable right that is measurable and we do have scales to measure the mass so the mass of an object uh, is just a quantification of its physical existence right so if you can touch it if you can pick it up if you can see it right it exists um, in its physical form and it does have a mass so everything that exists in a physical form must have mass no longer no matter how much now you want to go and ask well what about photons read <laughs> all right massless particles that go at the speed of light exactly right so they don't have the mass but they do have a mass e equals mc squared so there is a thing over there that you have to understand that mass and energy are one and the same thing it's the same coin with two sides and whether you're going to have energy or you're going to have mass is the same thing so if you say that something is massless but it has the energy it actually does have a mass if you convert with uh, with that um, uh, equation so without going into particle physics and all of these uh, cool things that you can um, learn if you if you want to uh, just say it's the cheapest easiest and and the, the laziest way to define mass as a quantification of physical existence done deal right so now the mass integral is computed as the integral of density so mass is equal to integral a to b of rho of x dx right for 1d case then mass is equal to the double integral over region r rho of x y dA for 2d cases and then mass is equal to the triple integral over the region d or whatever the hell we used with the um, rho which depends on x y z dv for 3d now i'm going to be um well let me add this um also done in polar and over here also done in cylindrical plus spherical so you are not limited to xyz you might have spherical integrals you might have polar integrals for 2d and and, and so on so you have uh, the whole spiel of different now please look that you are not supposed to memorize three formulas you're memorizing concept that that mass is the integral of density now the dimensionality of the problem and the shape you have will govern which one of the six formulas is the one that you will use why do i say six well one two three four five and six right so you have six formulas there triple integral and spherical coordinates is a different looking formula than the one that i wrote here just open up yesterday's definition right so we all know um, now that the mass is simply the integral of density and then let the dimensions right the shape of the object the number of dimensions govern which formula you use and then also shape of the object uh, define which coordinate system you're going to use eventually leading to one of the six different forms so now that we know how to work with mass we can start talking about how to calculate where the objects uh, have the center of mass so center of mass would be a point where uh, if you place the object uh, at, finger at that point you can balance the object we'll keep the donut away from that definition right <laughs> because you have to stand it upside to to do that you can't use your finger to balance the donut um, let's leave it at that for now so now uh, what I have is the center of mass in 1D. So center of mass in 1D is uh, going to be 
Again, we are talking about uh, uh, a thin rod or we are talking about a, a piece of wire. Um, you can't really do center of mass for a piece of rope because rope just goes with it, right? But maybe you can uh, soak that rope in water and then freeze it. And then in that case, the rope will be <laughs> right straight and, 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 and hard and then you can just balance it then that, at that point. So whatever. But let's talk about... Uh, you know, either uh, a thin rod or let's talk about the um, uh, piece of wire that will stay straight if you keep it straight. Uh, rope and chain, well, we'll have to figure out, you know, what how to make them stay straight first and then we can do this. So we have our length uh, given, um, you know, A to, A to B and um, we will have either a uh, uniform density if rod is made out of a single uh, material or we can have a variable density if the, the material is transitioned. Guys, for certain applications you are going to use various metals within the same object to achieve the goal of the design. If you are familiar with the circuit breakers, you know what they, what they are for. If there is a, a short of some kind in your electrical uh, installation in a house, the circuit breaker is supposed to interrupt the, the circuit and uh, cut off the supply of, uh, of voltage uh, to the outlet to prevent house fires. Uh, when you short the circuit, uh, you are making uh, the current uh, try to go to infinity. And there is an uh, equation which uh, directly relates the current to the temperature. So the more current, the more temperature, which is what causes fires. So if there is a short of any kind, uh, the circuit breaker is designed to interrupt that breaker. Now, what is the design of that? Well, uh, you put two different alloys in a rod like this within a circuit breaker. And what happens is the different metals have the different um, uh, melting points and a different way at which they um, uh, conduct heat and all of that stuff. So what happens is when you, when you uh, have the current going through, the, through that rod, which consists of two different metal, two uh, ends of the, of the rod will um, uh, expand and contract do, uh, because of the heat at a different rate which causes it to bend and disrupt. So if this is a, if this is a switch, right, and this is made out of uh, two different metals, and it's giving a contact on this side so the, the electrical current flows through the, through the switch. As soon as there is a lot of current, right, because this end of the rod is from the different material than this end of the rod, this one will have to bend, and it bends outward, and when it bends outward due to heat, it interrupts the circuit, right? So there is the design. Right, which uses this multiple um, varying density, right? So two different metals, but they have different density uh, to, you know, create an uh, something that is <laughs> very useful in our everyday life, right? It protects the the home, right, from burning down every time there is something got happening with electrical. So what you have is uh, rod, and again we are going to have rho to be constant, uniform density meaning one material or rho of x right or rho of x variable density we already said that the mass of this uh, rod will be integral of density and now that density rho is either rho of x or just rho right so we have we have that now when you want to balance this you will be placing somewhere your finger, right? Or some sharp object for thing to balance on. And uh, you want to know where the location is, so that will be placed at X bar, right? We call the, the center of mass, the coordinate for length is X bar. So your uh, job is to find uh, X bar. Now, how does this work? Well, you will be calculating the moment uh, around the moment is uh, the the spin of the object when it's not balanced. So if I just put anywhere this pencil and I let go without balancing it, you will see that it first it first spins and then falls off of the finger. Right? You see that it, it spins first. So look, 
it spins first and then it falls, right? The same thing will happen with any other object. If I balance this, you see it first spins and then falls. So we will be calculating the moment around the, the point where it spins. And uh, the moment is given by the integral. So this is what you are learning now. So the moment is given by the integral of x rho uh, dx from a to b. And then finally, your x bar will be the moment divided by mass. So this is, this is the triplet of formulas that you need for 1D, 1D center of mass. Observe that I only calculate the x, the length of it, because that is the only thing that I need, right? I just need to find where is the x on this length that will make the whole thing balance. Now, uh, if I have, and I do have a little bit of a metal on the end, which houses the eraser, right? An eraser is different uh, uh, also density than the wood. But let's say that I have uh, a larger piece of heavy metal at the end, right? So balancing of the pencil will not, not be at the center of the length of the pencil. It will be somewhere closer to that bulky metal, heavy metal side of the pencil and then the pencil will be balanced because you have the lighter material on one side that is less dense, so less mass, and the denser material with more mass on the other side, so the X bar should move closer to the denser, heavier side. That should be common sense from, from balancing uh, point of view. So um, when you look at the, um, at the calculation now, uh, well, let's go to the homework side and uh, pick up a single, a uh, single, I mean, uh, 1D, 1D problem and work it out quickly. So it uh, doesn't matter anything, 9 through 14. Uh, I like the 13 and 14 because they have piecewise functions. This is two metals or two different materials uh, glued together in a single rod, which is what I was telling you about uh, earlier. So let me see PC. Uh, if you take a look at problems 9 through 12, they, none of them have uniform density. They all have a variable density, right? But that could be uh, one material has a variable density due to imperfections of production. Maybe you have more air bubbles, uh, you know, penetrating one air area. Or the wood. Wood is organic material. It's not going to be uniform density to the naked eye. It looks like, but the wood has, you know, little knots and a little heavier side somewhere and then, you know, less dense on the other end. So variable density, but the single material. Now look at these densities, right? These are completely different formulas at different lengths. So zero to two, the density is uniform at one, and then one plus X, the increasing density uh, from two to four. So clearly your center of mass <laughs> better be somewhere between two to four because that's denser part of the rod and zero to four, two is in, a, in the middle, right? So common sense is to, to have the center of mass somewhere. So we should compute either 13 or 14. We'll do the warm up problem and then actually do one of these that you will actually deal with as you are you know, doing your, 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 your jobs. So piecewise functions are great when you have multiple materials that are connected to the same object guys i have this pencil it's wood and graphite everywhere so i would call that density of one and then i do have this metal eraser which turns into the metal uh, housing for the eraser which has the rubber eraser inside which could be 13 uh part one plus x density or whatever right so let's go and uh, take a look at this uh, i have Uh, let's go with whatever, number 10, doesn't matter. So we do the quick um, example. So 10, uh, row density is given as 1 plus x cubed, so variable density, and we have uh, 0 to 1. So this is a 1 meter, 1 foot, 1 inch, whatever length of the object, and we have density given for it. So now what I'm going to do is... Uh, first find the mass integral, so that's going to be 0 to 1 of 1 plus x cubed dx. Uh, that is uh, x plus x to the 4 over 4, 
uh, computed from 0 to 1, which is 5 quarters. So we have 5 quarters for the mass. And now I calculate moment. Moment is x rho, integral, right, dx. So I have integral 0 to 1 for uh, x times 1 plus x cubed dx, which is the integral of x plus x to the fourth. dx I can, I'll pretty much solve the problem. <laughs> Um, this is uh, x squared over 2 plus x5 over 5 from 0 to 1, which is a half plus a fifth, which is 7 tenths. So the x bar is when you divide the moment by the mass. Uh, moment is given as 7 over 10. Mass is given as 5 over 4. So that's uh, 7 times 4 over 10 times 5. Kill this. You'll get 5 and a 2. That's a 14 over 25. Uh, I would strongly advise you to make sure that the number you're getting is within the bounds of the object. Uh, even when you talk about your... I have to always go back to your donut. Your donut is going to have the bounds at the end, so the center of mass will be within those two bounds, whatever the width of the object is. But you still can't balance it because you can't touch the point. All right, so um, uh, clearly x bar is 14 over 25, and common sense over here, 14 over 25 is between 0 and 1, so I will put a, a green check mark over here. Uh, common sense is good, and I don't have to face palm on this. Uh, by the way, the only way to hurt me is to hurt yourself, right? Because that's the only way I'm going to face palm when you have your, your center of mass on this problem to be 7, right? And the object goes from 0 to 1, right? That's where I go, psh. So... And it's zero, obviously, on the problem. It's just pure anger. It's like no partial credit. Uh, now, let's take a look at a more interesting example. So problem 13, let's say, has the rho of x given as a piecewise function because this um, object has two different materials, right? That are glued one to another into this uh, long rod. This rod is 0 to 4, but the first part is uh, between uh, 0 and 2, and the second part is between 2 and 4. So the actual length of the whole thing is 4. Now, to calculate the mass, we have to use two integrals, because for the two pieces of this, we have two different densities. So first integral is 0 to 2 of 1, that's the row, right, dx, plus integral 2 to 4 of 1 plus x dx. So the mass of the object is um, uh, x computed from 0 to 2, plus x plus x squared over 2 computed from 2 to 4. We compute this. The first one is 2, plus the second one is 4 plus 8 minus 2 minus 2. So uh, 4 will die with these 2s, and we have 10. So mass is 10. 10 grams, 10 kilograms, 10 slugs. Right, slug is the unit of mass in in imperial system. You know that? All right, learn it. Now I need to calculate the moment. And again, two integrals. We have the moment of uh, 0 to uh, 2 of the uh, x times rho, so x dx, plus uh, 2 to 4, of uh, 1 plus x times x dx, and now we compute this, so we have uh, x squared over 2 calculated from 0 to 2, plus uh, x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 calculated from 2 to 4. This is one dimensional. Yeah. So that's going to be uh, 4 divided by 2 is 2 plus 
Uh, 16 over 2 is 8, and then 64 over 3, oh, uh, kill me now, uh, minus uh, 4, 2, and then minus 8 thirds. So 2 and 2 die. Uh, this is 8 plus uh, 64. Is 64? Yeah. So that will be what? Uh, 57, 56. So 56 over 3, 5, 6, 11. <laughs> Great. So this is equal to 8, uh, 24, and then the 80 over 3. So our x bar is uh, moment divided by the mass. Moment is given as 8 over 80 over 3 divided by 10. Uh, you can put 10 over 1 if you want to. So this is 80 over 30, which is 8 thirds. 8 thirds, right? So x is 8 thirds. Let's do the sanity check. I have a, a bar that goes 0 to 4. This is the heavy side because it's more dense. Density over here is 1, density over here is 1 plus x. So heavier side on 2 to 4. So obviously, obviously, if your IQ is more than 3, is that center of mass must be in the heavier side of the half of the rod, and we got 8 thirds. 8 thirds is 2 and 2 thirds, right? So about 2.66666. So yeah, 2.7, call it 2.7. It is in the in the side, so we are getting it that center of mass somewhere over here. So then I get to put a big check mark. Bueno? I'm working so hard because I really try to eliminate all, all of the designers that will repeat what happened in Florida, you know. You remember that bridge collapsing, you know, six people and, uh, yeah. It was supposed to be a bridge for university students to go across. Well, there's no bridge now because it was wonderfully designed. Yeah, there, there goes your 70, your 70 percent C <laughs> engineering. <laughs> He was 70% structurally just fine, right? Yeah, the problem is that those 30% caused what happened. So, yeah, there you go. Terrible joke, but appropriate. People have died. Yeah, check it out. 2D. Are we doing seven today? Oh, we're going to start seven. Start. Yes, we're going to do seven today, all day tomorrow, the review and all of that stuff. Seven, everything this is long. Your shoulder is too far, but this would be the, <laughs> this would be the shoulder tap. Didn't I say this to begin the, right? Now you wish you did this, right? We did the easiest case. Now we're, we're adding the fire. So now we have a 2D case, right? We have the, some kind of a plane or a disc or a triangle or something. And uh, if the uniform density is there, and if it's a rectangle, then the center of mass better be at the intersection of diagonals. Obviously, right? But the trick is that when you have something like this, I have keys on this side, I don't have keys here. And there's your variable density, so the intersectional diagonals goes right in the garbage, right? <laughs> so, plus it has this extra lip that you would actually have to take in consideration, right? That's an extra rectangle that you're adding on, a, on the side over here. So, this could be a project. Like, if, if, if this tablet was school-issued thing that you have to have, which was an idea at one point in time, then you would all have this, and one of your project problems would be to give me the exact center of mass for this. And all of you who ignore this little piece over here would get the problem wrong, right? Because clearly that adds weight to not having the center of mass because it will be adding mass this way to flip that way towards the heavier end. So your center of mass has to go ever so slightly closer to this from the center, right? But anyway, 
We have this. Uh, you can practice this with a piece of cardboard. You can go to Home Depot, get a little piece of the, the wood, right, and then cut little semicircle or something, and then you know, uh, do these do these kind of things. So when you have a 2D case, guys, we are dealing with uh, following equations, right? We are looking for the center of mass that would be x bar, y bar. So now we're looking for two of these, and uh, let's see our um, equations. So first we have to calculate mass. We already know that's going to be integral over the region R, which is our region here, uh, of the density, which could be uniform or variable. So we'll put rho of xy and then dA. Why do I put dA? Because it could be dx dy, could be dy dx, or could be r dr d theta. Right? Right. That's going to depend on the shape you have. The next formula is a moment formula. So moment on x is going to be double integral r y times rho x y dA. And moment on y is double integral x rho x y dA. So now when you go and say, huh, why is not x with x and y with y? What the hell? Well, your x now is x-axis. So you see the x-axis? Now, when I put the object on that x-axis, does it spin towards the y? You see that? It's the y spin. If this is x, it's the y spin. If you put y, it's the x spin, right? So that's how you, it's physics, right? Rudimentary physics. So we have mx is going to be y rho um, dA, right? Because the x-axis is going to be wobbly in the y direction. And um, yeah, that's good. So what is the um, the x bar, right? The x bar will be with the x calculation. So we have y bar is mx over m, and x bar is my over m. Trying to so that's a page one thousand twenty seven in your textbook. There is the the theorem in the in the box, the definition on top. And they, um, they kind of hide the mass integral over here in the text. There's the mass integral there. So here's your x bar corresponding with the, with the x. Now they, they put everything in a one formula. I separate these. So they have 1 over m here because it's immediately x bar, right? So they have the integral divided by m, and m is this one. You can write this double integral divided by double integral if you want to, but why would you? So I separate this. As you can see, uh, it's easier to follow uh, if it's this way, where you have mass calculation, moment calculations, and then center of mass calculations are uh, all separate. And uh, now you also have right the choices between all different dx dy or dy dx or Right, so all of that stuff is, is there. Let's take a look at the problem that we have in the homework and then move on to the 3D case. Variable density plates, center of mass of constant density solids, Okay, so uh, 2D problems 21 through 26. Uh, too easy, easy. Triangular plate in the first quadrant bounded by. Okay, sounds good. I like it. Triangular plate. Or I can do the. Um, there's, there are no pictures, it's just text, so pointless to switch. Uh, upper half of the face bounded by the ellipse. That should be a living nightmare to do. Uh, quarter disc in the first quadrant. Ooh, quarter disc in the first quadrant. Quarter disc, on, you get to use polar coordinates on that one. 
Should we enjoy that? Yeah, let's do a polar problem. Yeah, polar problem. You can do X and Y. 26. The quarter disc in a first quadrant. Ah, great. You know, that's two, two slices of pizza. There we go. Quarter of a pie. That's what we have. Uh, the formula is given as uh, x squared plus uh, y squared equal to 4. So what's our radius? 2. Two thank you. Thank you for participating. Otherwise, you know, I call on you, you don't respond, and I get depressed. And... Uh, we have variable density. Awesome. 1 plus x squared plus y squared. So we have variable density and we have the shape. Great. So first order of business is to compute mass as the double integral over the region R, which is our region over here, uh, as the rho of dA. Now, your choices of dA, this is the menu for 2D. We have dx dy, dy dx, or r dr d theta. So those are our menu, menu choices. So you go on and you say, yeah, I'm vegan, right? That's the choice right there. Uh, whatever. <laughs> there is a second and a third part to that joke, but uh, I'm not feeling it now. So, and if you are vegan, you deserve to be offended. It's okay. Um, mass. So, I have a double integral, and uh, I am going to integrate this in polar coordinates because it's a quarter of a disk. So, the density rho is going to be 1 plus r squared. So the conversion over here is, this puppy over here is r squared. We know that from polar conversion. Uh, I have my string for polar integrals, which is r dr d theta. And now limits. What are my limits for theta? Z zero to pi over two. Thank you very much. Yes. It's a quarter of a disk, right? It goes from zero angle theta on x-axis to y-axis, which is pi over 2. And how about my uh, radius r? Yeah, 0 to 2. Good. All right, so now we get to integrate this. Not a problem. Easy peasy. Integral of r is r squared over 2. Integral of r squared is r cubed over 3. Computed from 0 to... What happened? I did distribute in my... Oh, this is supposed to be a 4 and a 4. Yeah, you're right. I did it wrong. Because this is r plus r cubed. r plus r cubed, so r squared over 2 plus r 4 over 4. I will still have d theta to worry about. Uh, I have integral 0 to pi over 2, and now I have uh, 2 plus uh, 4 minus 0. Who cares? So that's 6. Great, 6d theta. And uh, this is equal to now 6 theta from 0 to pi over 2, which is 3 pi, right? So we have 3 pi for mass. 3 pi grams, 3 pi kilograms, 3 pi slugs, whatever it is, right? Now we have our moments. Moment x is double integral y rho dA. Aha. Let me write this in blood. Y equals r sine theta. With this screaming at the end. Okay, so now we set up our polar coordinate integral. So mx is... Double integral, we are still 0 to pi over 2, it's the same shape, still 0 to 2. And our y is r sine theta, and we have our rho 1 plus r squared, and then r dr d theta. Whee! 
it's getting interesting, right? 0 to pi over 2, 0 to 2. Now I have sine theta, and now I have all the r's. So r squared plus r to the fourth, the r the theta. 0 to pi over 2. Sine theta copied as a constant, right? We are integrating r's. So I have r cubed over 3 plus r to the 5 over 5 from 0 to 2 d theta and then next step. 0 to pi over 2, copy sine theta and now plug in 2, that's 8 thirds plus uh, that's uh, 8 uh, 16 32 fifths. Hey, who picked these numbers? d theta yeah, it's 40 and 96, 136. Good enough? Don't care? All right, fine, 136 it is. No objections. Over 15. Uh, integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine theta d theta. Integral of sine is? Very good. <laughs> Negative cosine exactly. So we have cosine theta from 0 to pi over 2. Oh, aren't we lucky that that negative popped up, right? Otherwise, it would be a negative number and the whole thing would go to hell. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, minus cosine of 0 is 1. Whew, that negative was, <laughs> was a save. You see that your, your shape, your object is purely in the positive quadrant. If you got negative, and you can't have negative mass. So, so if you get a negative mx, right, and the shape is all, only in positive quadrant, it will be a negative divided by a positive and automatically wrong, right, without even checking and looking at numbers. It's wrong because you have a sign that has a center of mass outside of the object's bounds. So I calculated the y, so this gives me the y bar right away. y bar is mx divided by the mass. That's 136 over 15 divided by 3 pi. If you scroll for 15 minutes up. Uh, it's 136 uh, divided by 45 pi. I mean 45 over pi, <laughs> over 45, over, over pi, whatever. Pi is in the denominator. <laughs> there we go. That's our y bar. Eh, I'll write it on the side. Y bar is equal to 136 over 45 pi. You know what I would like to do here? I'd like to make sure that this number is, is, is uh, within the bounds, right? It better be smaller than the than the radius of, of 2, otherwise I am doomed. Um, so I'll go to my trusty calculator over here and do 136 divided by 45 divided by pi and get that the y yeah, orange. Y bar is approximately 0.962. All right, I like it. Great. Now let's do the other half of the problem. Remember that we have MY to calculate with the X. So my is going to be double integral region r x rho of x y d a, and um, here again in blood x is given as r cosine theta. So let's go. Double integral. Okay. I was waiting for that one. 
Uh, the answer to that is yes when the density is uniform. Now, luckily you have radial symmetry for the density, so I have to applaud your, uh, right, your, your question. However, uh, most of the cases when you have variable density and the symmetric shape, the answer is no. The answer is actually hell no. <laughs> so, so um, as I said, if you are very comfortable with these, and I know you are, so because I know your performance in the class, uh, I will talk about I was I will talk about this again after the problem. You should exploit symmetry when, without a doubt, you can. You see a symmetric shape, right? You know the answer has to lay uh, along the forty-five degree line, right? Pi for four and all of these kind of things. Sure, but as soon as the variable density kicks in and the variable density um, is not going to the same deal why you are not supposed to use the symmetry of the base of the object right the domain of the object to set up a triple integral for volume because function z on top might not be symmetric that way and uh, you know one half of the object will have more volume than the other and that breaks the symmetry so uh, my answer to you is yes, be very careful, very careful. Uh, zero to two are cosine, do, do you honestly think that I like them calculating this from scratch? No, but I have been told that I'm the best in the galaxy, so I'm doing it, you know, it's it's just that's what the best of us do even though we don't have to r squared plus r to the 4 dr d theta and then we have our uh, first integral stays we integrating so cosine theta constant we have our r cubed over 3 plus r to the 5 over 5 uh, computed from 0 to 2 d theta this r and this r make this one into r squared bueno yay what happened to it we multiplied it that's the that's the answer so we have a cosine theta, and then this number was 136 over 15 over here. That stays the same. D theta, so 136 over 15. And now I have the cosine is going to be the sine, right? So we have sine theta from 0 to pi over 2. Uh, plug in the upper, you get 1, so... Yeah, okay. There it is. We have the same answer, 136 uh, over 15, as we had before. So now our um, x bar is going to be my divided by the mass, which is 136 over 15. As Andrew commanded, right, this is going to be, again, 136 over 45 pi, because we had radial symmetry in uh, density function and the object was also radially symmetric quarter of a circle so what we have is uh, x bar and y bar the same 136 over 45 pi so on your quarter circle the center of mass so guys this is uh, zero and this is two center of mass sits over here a little bit less than a one right a little bit less than the one, and that's where the, the center of mass is. So you take your finger, you take this, you know, two pizza slices like that, and put them there. Just make sure you freeze them or whatever. Right? And uh, you also have to have the same radial symmetry, so that means more toppings on one side, less. To right. Yeah. You can use this at your at your place of work. Yeah, didn't you say you work at pizzeria? Yeah. There you go. You can market it as the calculus sound pizza.
Would you guys buy it that's marketed that way? I know, right? Not enough stuff is marketed for geeks. So, 3D. I write 3D and my first thought is kill me now. All right? <laughs> so, what do we have? 3D center mass. Ah. Well, we have our M to be the triple integral over region D of some rho density which could be uniform but could be a function of three variables over here. DV. Uh, DV has uh, six uh, dx, dy, dz forms plus another cylindrical, right? So there are eight different things that you can use, which would depend on the shape that you have, like the object that you are considering for center of mass. So, good luck. We have our MX, M, um, MXY, and then MXZ uh, and MYZ, so moments on these. And um, students generally say, okay, MXY, uh, which variable is missing? <laughs> yeah, it's zero, right, DV? And then you have your uh, Z bar uh, to be MXY over the mass. And then just go down the line, create all of the formulas. So uh, M M Y M Y Z triple integral over region D, which variable is missing? Oh, it's Y. Okay, good. Because if you're anchoring the other two, the only degree of freedom to rotate in is the one that it's missing. Does that make sense? If you anchor X and Y, then Z is the only degree of freedom to rotate around. So that, there you go. I'm not writing rho X, Y, Z. I should be, but I'm lazy. So we have Y bar to be MXZ divided by the mass integral. And finally, M, uh, Y, Z. Which variable is missing? It's X. Rho, X, Y, Z, DV. I'll add X, Y, Z over here. I want to keep my status of being the best. There you go. So there are your um, 25 integral formulas in <laughs> written in four lines. And uh, yeah, good luck. So center of a ball is the center of mass if the ball is made out of the uniform material. If you um, had those uh, very heavy balls for um, like exercise, usually you uh, taught in high school, whatever. Medicine ball? Medicine ball? Medicine ball, thank you. So medicine ball, well it should be made out of rubber, right? It doesn't have air inside. It has rubber everywhere. Now, depending on how carefully it's constructed, right, manufactured, you will have uniform density everywhere, and the center of mass of that ball would be at the center of the ball. Common sense. And you use that to prove uh, using the spherical coordinates, you go through five hours of calculations and you get zero, zero, zero. And you go, yeah, of course, right? But then imperfections in manufacturing, adding more air bubbles to the mix of the, of the rubber, right? So it looks like a, like a Swiss, Swiss cheese. Uh, if you are uh, lactose intolerant, I really don't have anything else for you. Uh, as, uh, as, uh, what is the, what, what it means to have bubbles in the thing. Um, so having more bubbles in one part of the bowl would make obviously non-uniform density, would have some kind of row function, and that will move center of mass away from it. Uh, also, another thing is um, very subtle but important, uh, the um, gambling dice. You know, the, the, they say a fair dice, right? If you actually see a professional dice and it has one dot for number one and six dots for number six, 
Uh, first off, the sum across the dice when it's pr produced well is always seven. So six opposes one, two opposes five, and four opposes three. So it's always seven across when you when you add. That's the first thing. The second thing is. Uh, if you are looking at the professional dice, it's not going to be a solid block of, of, of plastic with a little paint right on the sides. Yeah, they're actually going to have carved out plastic and colored within that plastic. And you will also see, for the professionally, what they call fair dice, well-balanced dice, you will see that the amount of material they carve out for number one is much bigger than for six holes of six. It's actually computed to have the same amount of material carved out for each of the six sides of the dice. And that makes the dice uh, fair. When every side of the dice has the same amount of material carved out, so now obviously one side has six dots, the other one has right, so six holes, the other one has two holes, let's say. So uh, obviously the holes for two have to be bigger, deeper, than those for number six. So you will see that number one has a big hole, right? And then number six has very small hole. Right? Uh, which also from design point is, is great because, right, you have to fit six holes and separate them so they're visible, so smaller works better, but it also works better from the balancing point of view. Now, if you are not um, looking to play the game fairly, right, then you have the rig dice. And what do you do for rig dice? Well, if you need number six most of the time, Right, you add some metal flakes to the side where the one is, and you have seen that in the movie uh, Oceans, and then there's a number of them. So they put the, put the metal flakes into the mix, right, in Chinese factory, obviously, that's where all the mixing is done, and those metal flakes end up where they should, so when you throw the dice over time, right, your preferred, right, you, you, you skew what we call the expected value, you learn in statistics, that's the way that, uh, a fancy way for, for weighted average. So uh, expected value of the dice must be uh, one, uh, must be uh, three and a half, right? Expected value of the dice is three and a half uh, because it's in the middle of all of the numbers from one to six. Now, when you take a look at uh, the weighted average for the fixed die, right, that number is, is, is shifted. So <clears throat> obviously, uh, if you have the, the weight added to the face that has number one on it, and there is gravity, uh, contrary to popular belief for all the flat or the initials, um, you, gravity, right? That was true, it was like a sign, right? Sign from Newton or something, that's like, you were right. <laughs> uh, the, uh, actually, wait, no, Newton is now, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, didn't make sense. This drop track on this one. Um, <laughs> the, so the uh, number that is weighted due to gravity, right, will will show the opposite number more. So if you weight one, it will show six more often than it should. So you get to win more, obviously, and over time. Uh, casinos make money because they're open 24-7, and on average, they win just a little bit in each game, but they win all the time, right? So you can swoop in and win 10k and they don't even feel it because you know you have 10k people losing a dollar every second so you win 10k it's like for them in time you will you it, 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 it's a free it's it's free advertising for them because this person is going to go home and say to 100,000 people i got 10k right and then all those 100,000 people are going to come in and waste 20 bucks each so right so that's that's how it goes so when you are talking about central mass for 3D object, there you go, right? So now, what type of integral do you have? Well, it's either cylindrical or spherical or X, Y, Z. And um, you look at the shape, you look at the, the region, right? You look at the shape, you decide which of the three, rectangular, spherical, or cylindrical, and then uh, you go on uh, computing all of this. The, the worst possible case, obviously, is to compute all of these in a spherical shape that has, you know, stuff that we did yesterday, the problem that where one of these integrals took 15 minutes times four integrals, it's an hour per problem, right? So, yay. Now, exploiting symmetry, um, 
we talked about exploiting the symmetry. You exploit the symmetry to reduce your calculations. And uh, it's very dangerous business because uh, you are not used to yet radial symmetries. So clearly Andrew was familiar with radial symmetry because he called it on the previous problem. Sure. But now you have to worry about cylindrical symmetry <laughs> for density and spherical symmetry, right? Which is uh, not as pleasant as radial symmetry. Uh, obviously, X, Y, Z, you should be able to kind of guess and work on that one. Uh, and obviously, you don't have to worry about symmetry at all if your uh, object is symmetric and you have uniform density. In that case, it's a GG, right? You win because it's, uh, that's the easiest case. So we want to see right, the uniform density. And when you see the uniform density um, the, and symmetric object, then you're just having calculation for mass and calculation for one of these three. And then the other two immediately will have the same value. Now, that happens only for a cube and the ball, right? So there's that. Cone. What integral should be used for a cone? Are we going to use cylindrical, spherical, or rectangular? And you're looking at the cone equation on the top as 4 minus the square root of x squared plus y squared. So it's going to be x, y, z, or cylindrical, or spherical. Hmm? Where's, the Where's the breakfast over here? I want to hear the breakfast. I want to hear the termination in your answer because you know it. What's the answer? Ah. You said cylindrical, yes. Cylindrical. Why is it cylindrical? Well, it's cylindrical because it's not spherical. You do not. <laughs> Both can be used, but please remember the flat bottom is a plane and what happens in cylindrical yes in spherical yesterday when you have a plane oh no, his secant happens in the limit right do we like secant in the limit no let's have our friend cylindrical uh, deal with this right because cylindrical has a z z is a flat plane so the bottom zero awesome works works great zero to four beautiful right so our friend uh, our friend there is 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 great so uh, for a cone, right, to find the center of mass, we are going to use this. Now, uh, if we have a uniform density, and they say of the constant density or uniform density, uh, beautiful. What do we know? Well, it's radially symmetric, and it's uniform density, so your center of mass better be on the z-axis that runs right through the middle of the cone. Right? That should be common sense. So you are only computing z-bar because your x bar and your y bar are immediately zero, zero. Are we all green on that? So exploiting symmetry when you have uniform density, exploiting the symmetry of the shape of the object is something that reduces your calculations um, a lot. So x and y bar are both zero, zero because it's in the center of the, of the cone and you only have to worry about this one a calculation worked out to be one. You can read the example and you are done. Moving on to the sphere. So when you have a full ball, right, the center of the ball is the center of mass if you have uniform density. With non-uniform density, all bets are off. Could be anywhere. Now, when you have the half of the ball called hemisphere, right, so half of the ball, you have the um, uh, upper portion or the lower portion. And again, if it's a uniform density, your center of mass has to be x equals 0, y bar equals 0. Right? And then z will be somewhere between 0 and the radius height in the z direction. So you will only again have to compute one integral for mass, one integral for moment x, y, divide for, x, uh, for z bar, and you're done. And those are two examples they give you because the 
because this lecture already is 15 pages. <laughs> right? So we go now into our um, and here are the variable density solids. I I, I, I don't want to compute the whole thing because I don't want to stay here seven hours, but it's, it's worthwhile at least, you know, doing some portion of this problem and then uh, asking you to waste time at home and, and finish it off, all right? So I'm going to calculate the mass and one of the three. So effectively, I'm doing half of the problem. And then you will calculate the remaining two moments and then you will present the answer at the end. And that should be your priority uh, over anything today because my, this is today's lecture. So solid is bounded by paraboloid z equals 4 minus x squared minus y squared. z equals 0. And the variable density is given as 5 minus z. Now, this is a paraboloid. What happened? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> you can tell he had the breakfast, right? <laughs> exactly. So, hmm? Faster than time. Oh, yes, sir. So, here's our. Uh, elliptical paraboloid, which in this case is actually a circular paraboloid, and we have the radius to be 2 when you plug in z equals 0 in the equation to calculate the, um, the shadow on the domain, i.e. where the object is the fattest. In this case, uh, it's on the bottom. So we have, we have this. Now I'm looking at this, and uh, again, the choices are spherical or cylindrical. Um, and... Uh, it's going to be, again, cylindrical because it's not spherical. I have the flat bottom. If I have a flat bottom, then we're using cylindrical uh, integrals. So the calculation for mass, I mean, you use the spherical as well. Uh, you know, you do the, you do the secant thing. Uh, if it's going to make the rest of your life easier, right, other than that one thing, you okay? You fine? All right. Please, just don't bleed on the carpet, okay? <laughs> Go in the hallway. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He was doing something and something exploded. Oh, it was, it's food. They exploded. Okay, good. I don't know what happened. I just, I just heard the explosion over there. It was the bag. All right, fine. So, um, so the mass, right? We have the triple integral. And uh, we have our uh, density. And we have our uh, our string for polar uh, for the dz r dr d theta right for for cylindrical. Please don't forget this r. That's that's one of the one of the things that that kills your grade on the on Tuesday. Hmm. Yeah. So string for this is dz, d, uh, r, dr, d theta, and the string for the other one is r, 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 squared sine phi, very good. And then d rho, d phi, d theta, okay, good. So one person knows it, great. Uh, theta, zero to two pi, I want the whole thing. Uh, radius, zero to two. And um, uh, z, uh, bottom is 0, and top is 4 minus r squared. Right, this thing over here is negative r squared. We went on that. Good. So now we are going to integrate uh, z out. So this is going to be 5z uh, minus z squared over 2. And we are plugging in 0 to 4 minus r squared r dr d theta. Did I tell you to start a new notebook? No? Yeah, because you'll need it for this problem. And then the next section. 
So we have um, 0, 0, 2 pi 2. Uh, plug in this, that's 20 minus 5r squared minus 1 half open parenthesis and now we got to square this so that's going to be 16 minus 8r squared plus r to the fourth beautiful uh, all of these times r and then the r of the theta nice all right so now we simplify this that's going to be 20 minus 5r squared minus 8 plus 4r squared minus 1 half r to the fourth and now everything is time r the r the theta combine like terms and distribute r so I have 20 minus 8 is 12 so that's going to be 12 r then i have 5 r squared minus plus so that's negative r cubed because you have negative 1 r squared times r and finally you have minus 1 half r to the fifth dr d theta uh, guys this is not hard this is annoying there's a there's a difference between the the two definitions all right so here's your definition of annoying 0 to 2 pi uh, 12 cut in half is 6 so 6 r squared minus r to the 4 over 4 uh, minus r to the 6 over 12 because you had a half there computed from 0 to 2 oh finally a breath of fresh air plug in 2 that's 424 uh, plug in 2 that's 16 that's 4 and plug in 2 that's uh, 3264 over 12 I can cancel this by 4 right if I cancel this by by 4 I get 1 6 over 3 16 thirds uh, 0 will kill everything And I have 20 minus 16 thirds. So that's uh, 60, 50, 44 thirds. So 44 thirds integral 0 to 2 pi of d theta. That's 2 pi. So 88 pi over 3. Yay! Mass is 88 pi over 3. I'm going to proudly display that in the red box. Good. The next order of business is to compute, you know, one of the three and then you will get the other two. So, whatever. I pick, um, give me two variables, X, Y, Z. Which one? And uh, Y. Okay, MX, Y. Fine. So mxy, moment of xy, will give us the triple integral over region d with the z times rho dv. Uh, guys, I get to do control c, control v on the on the part for the spherical coordinates up there, except we have to be careful with the... Ooh, uh, maybe I shouldn't be doing the xy because uh, that's the easiest one. Sorry. I'll do yz because that's going to give me an x over here. And you can do y and z z is the easiest one of all because we are using cylindrical coordinates it's z is z in cylindrical coordinates what's x exactly so i have my triple integral uh, all of the limits are the same so what do i have zero 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 okay I have 2 pi, I have 2, and I have 4 minus r squared. And now here is x. It's the polar part. Yeah, r cosine theta. And then our rho was given as... What was our rho? 
5 minus z. Uh, 5 minus z. Nice. And now I have uh, the z, r, the r, the theta. Nice. You can, you can see my face, right? Excruciating pain. We have r squared cosine theta, 5z minus z squared from 0 to 4 minus r squared dr d theta. Uh, I took this r and immediately multiplied dr out there because uh, dz, this r can go in and out. It's a constant, it can go anywhere. It can't pass this dr but it can go in front or behind dz, it doesn't matter. So immediately hopped and created the r squared in front. So now this is integral of 0, 0, 2 pi, 2. And now I have this entire 5z minus z squared, the whole thing, right, I had before. Um, what do you need 2 under the z squared? Yeah. Yeah. 2 under the z squared. Over here? Yeah. It's there. Clearly, look. It says over two, right? <laughs> That's okay. Next time asks, I. <laughs> I have to entertain myself. I'm sorry. It's just this is excruciatingly boring. <laughs> <laughs> like my mind is everywhere now, but <laughs> working this out. Huh? So I have uh, r squared cosine theta here, and this piece over here, guys, was done earlier. That's this piece over here, which is this piece over here, before this r, which works out to be this piece over here, a power less. Okay, good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually steal this and I'm just going to fix the powers what happened? whatever uh, 12 minus r squared minus one half r to the four. So 12 minus r squared minus, yes, so um, so this r, remember that I put it into r squared, so that's why I'm using this here without one of the r's. Great, so now I have this, I still have the r the theta, now I get to distribute r squared, and finally integrate r. So cosine theta in front, 12 r squared minus r to the 4 minus 1 half r to the 6, the r the theta. Integral 0 to 2 pi, cosine theta, and now I do 12 r, that's 4 r cubed, uh, minus 1, uh, so r to the 5 over 5, minus r to the 7 over 14 from 0 to 2 d theta. 0 to 2 pi cosine theta. Now that's 8 times 4, 32, uh, minus uh, r to the 5, 32 over 5, minus uh, r to the 7, so 32, 64, 128 over 14, 64 over 7. Uh, zeros kill everything, d theta. 0 to 2 pi cosine theta. Uh, 32, uh, 5, that's 4 times 32, 128 over 5. Minus 64 over 7. Uh, d theta, so let's compute this on the side. We factor out 64 we get 2 over 5 minus 1 over 7, so that's 64 times 
that's uh, 14 minus 10 over 35. So that's 4 times 64, 240, 256 over 35. There we go. Cosine theta d theta from 0 to 2 pi. Yay. Uh, 256 over 35. We have a cosine, the uh, integral of that is sine 0 to 2 pi. And if I could draw the troll face over here, right? So. Uh, which one did I do? I did x, right? So x bar is myz over mass 0 divided by 88 pi over 3 is equal to big fat 0, so x bar is 0. We have a variable density that only varies the density in z direction. So it's radially symmetric. So x and y, both coordinates, have to be equal to 0 because its uh, object is also radial symmetric at 0, the origin. So both x bar and y bar must be 0 because your row only has z. If this had either x or y, they would not be here. So it's somewhere along the z-axis. So the z-axis is the only number um, that you that you have. No, no, no. You will say this is radially symmetric, and uh, generally, okay. So. We have seven sections in chapter 13. Uh, three of them are carpal tunnel inducing and four are not. So I can't really put you know, a lot of these, these problems there with uh, triple integrals and, and non-symmetries and things like that because you know, each problem takes 45 minutes. Um, if you do the, your, your homework honestly, guys, I am, I'm halfway through the problem. It's already two pages, right? So. I'm asking you to go home and verify that x bar is zero through calculation, and then also calculate z, which will actually give you the one value that you do need. So you have z, so you have zero, zero, z, whatever you get. Uh, make sure that that z is between zero and four, right? If your answer is 6.3, it's wrong because it's outside of the object, right? The object is from zero to four. So it must be somewhere on the z axis between zero and four. So when you get through all of these calculations, uh, you will uh, you will have your uh, so I'll, I'll say that the you know y bar is also zero and then z is just do it so you will have your uh, x y z so you know finish this up at home to practice a little bit of cylindrical integration right setting up and solving cylindrical integrals which is relevant for Tuesday and also um, calculate a little bit of this so. Uh, let's take a break before our heads explode. Yes? I'm sorry? For the, for the solving then on the side, is it going to be 14 minus 5? Yes, 14 minus 5. So this is 14 minus 5, which makes it a 9. So what are the numbers? Five seven six over thirty five. Okay, it's still zero at the end. But yeah, thank you. I I don't know why I multiply two times. I'm supposed to multiply one. So. Yeah. Oh, too quick. <laughs> Bye.